What's going on everybody? Wanted to take the time and show you guys one common way that a regular rectifier will prove itself to be bad. Okay, super quick check that you can do in a battery will tell you a number of different things. The complaint for this one was the battery was going dead. He's, he's been going through three to four batteries in a matter of time. He's tried different batteries, tried all different situations, but it seemed like the battery was dead the next day or whatever have you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a stationary check with the bike running. First we'll check the battery voltage and make sure the battery voltage is up to where it should be. These are really quick checks. Yes, you can check amperage on the battery, you can check amperage output, you can do all these different, I can check stator output windings and all this stuff, but the goal is to just diagnose it quickly, understand if this is going wrong in this way, this is what the problem is. Okay, on these newer bikes, anything usually over 80s, uh, you're going to have a, re a combined regular rectifier, a stator, a flywheel, and that's really the only three components of the charging system. But with this check of the battery with the bike running at a certain RPM, it's going to tell us a number of different things. What I mean by that is with the battery in its stationary position, we should have anything above 12.4. Anything that's reading 12 volts, period, is actually considered a dead battery. Okay, it needs to be charged or it's bad. So anything over 12.4. So what's weird is that on most batteries, a 13 volts reading is a great battery and it's a 12 volt battery but it, yet it has 13 volts. That's not uncommon to see 13.4, 13.2, 12.8, 12.4, those, those type of numbers when it comes to the battery in a stationary position. All right, so I'm gonna use my meter with volts DC, which is the V with the straight line. I'm just gonna check the battery out, okay? Positive to positive, red on positive, black on negative. And that's giving us 13.48 volts. That's great. It's great. He even said the battery is brand new, so I knew it was going to be good, at least. So what I'm going to do is, really quickly, I'm going to check the entire charging system out just by positive to positive, negative to negative with the bike running. Okay. So what we're going to find is that, or what we're looking for, is, is the battery being charged? Okay. As soon as we fire the bike up, obviously the voltage is going to drop because it gives as much as it can to the starter to get it going, as well as to the coils and everything else. And then we're just going to let it idle, okay, and see what the voltage is doing then. Is it slowly ticking off, dropping down, or is it pretty much holding steady? And then, once we have seen what's going on, if it's even charging the battery, because it's not being charged, boom, stator, more than likely. Possible regular rectifier, but more than likely, I would go straight for the stator and start pinning out and testing different wires with that. But we're going to get it running. Operating voltage with this at around 5,000 RPM should be around 15.5 volts. That's what they're saying with the high beam on. Because with the high beam on, it's saying that on a stock system, that's as much current output as you're going to give this thing. No highway lights or LEDs or disco balls or anything like that. Stock system with the high beam on should be all that you're giving the system or all that you're taking from the system. I'm gonna, this bike's kind of loud, it has some straight pipes on it. So I'm gonna fire it up. I'm gonna bring the camera in on the meter. You might hear me talk, you might not. Like I said, the bike's kind of loud. 5,000 RPM is screaming with straight pipes. So we're gonna watch the meter and see what it does. And with those results, we're gonna talk about it. All right, so positive to positive. I always touch this negative lead to here or I can really touch anywhere on the ground because it all feeds back into the ground system. So but ideally, straight to the battery is what you want to do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my meter again to volts DC because we're not measuring AC voltage. We're testing past the regular rectifier to the battery. So batteries will only take DC. That's what we're gonna check it at. So try to hook this thing up. Maybe it will fall, maybe it won't, we'll see. All right, so we know we have at least battery voltage. So, put my earmuffs on, let's fire this thing up, we'll check it while it's running at idle, maybe a little bit of throttle because I'm not sure how well it's going to idle, and then I'll bring the RPMs up, I might hit 5 grand, I don't have a, these bikes don't have a tack on them, so I'm going to get it pretty ripping and um, we'll see what happens. So 13, it's dropping because the lights are on. Oh, 
that idle. It's pretty much staying put. Turn the high beam on. It's doing good, it's holding. Let's go ahead and give it some RPM. So, with those results, it's pretty easy for me and for you to isolate one thing, okay? As we know, the regulator rectifier is a combined unit. Its main two jobs are to change AC voltage into DC so the battery can take it, and the regulator portion regulates voltage to the battery. It doesn't want the battery to be overcharged. Like I said in the book, at 5,000 RPM, 15.5 volts with the high beam on is all they want it to take, okay? Which means that anything past 15.5, the regulator rectifier's job is to take that voltage and send it elsewhere other than the battery. It doesn't want the battery to get over 15.5. That's just unsafe. Okay, if you're charging the battery like we saw, 16, 17, and climbing. If I were to give it even more throttle, that wasn't even 5,000 RPM. If I were to give it even more throttle, it wouldn't just kept on going. Okay, because that AC voltage is putting out a lot. Right off the bat, I already know that the regular rectifier is bad. It's not a stator issue. It's not a starter button issue. It's not a starting solenoid issue. It has nothing to do with any of that in those components. Remember, start the stator, the flywheel, the regular rectifier. Those are the main components to your charging system. Obviously, there's also some key components that I want to look at, especially for the 1100. They often have a trouble, as you've seen in maybe some of my posts, the stator connection on these that comes from the stator up to the harness which then gets sent to the regular rectifier that AC voltage coming up goes into a three pin connector and what we found is that those three pin connectors have loose connections and they cause resistance heat and then they burn up and melt okay seen it many many times it's as simple as tracing back wire cutting it putting in new wire and a new brand new connector solves the issue but once that connector melts you can have a charging system issue. Stator could be putting out just fine, but it's never reaching the regular rectifier for it to send it to the battery, which would not be a regular rectifier issue if I find the issue beforehand before it gets there, okay? So there's a couple of things that we can check out, obviously, stator output, the connection from there to there, from the stator to the reg rec, and, you know, connections at the, at the rectifier and all that stuff as well. But with just that check, I've isolated one component of the charging system very simply. It overcharged the battery. This guy was dealing with overcharging all the time. It's very dangerous. Obviously, batteries can melt, catch fire, um, explode. There's all different types of scenarios that I've seen. But that's why he was going through batteries. The batteries are being overcharged, and once they get overcharged, they no longer function the way that they should because the, you just burn up and melt those lead cells inside that battery. It can't take a charge or hold a charge anymore, and it acts like a dead battery, okay? So, what I'm going to do is put a brand new regular rectifier in there. It's a combined unit. It's 57 bucks, which is awesome. It's actually very rare for regular rectifiers to go bad on Hondas, especially the newer ones. Very rarely do we deal with those type of systems where they are going bad. Usually a stator or the harness connections between that and the, and the regular rectifier. I'm going to swap it out, put a new one in. Charging system will be A-OK. -okay. Obviously, I'll double check it again. And like that, like I said, that threshold should hit five, should hit 15.5, either stay there or start dropping down. It might hit 15.5 and start dropping to 14.7, climb back up and do that over and over again. That means it's working exactly how it should be. I wanted to show you guys that on this bike, same exact test you can do on any bike. It will tell you what components is it charging. If it is charging, is it being overcharged? Or if it is charging, is it being undercharged? Is it not charging enough? Maybe you hook it up and you're giving it 8,000, 7,000, 6,000 RPM or 5,000 RPM and it's only kicking it up to like 13, 14 volts. It could be a battery problem or it could be not enough output at that stator. Okay, just a side note. But that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about. I hope you guys find that helpful when it comes to your charging system issue. Obviously, there's a number of different issues that can also go wrong with different bikes. 
but there's no real reason for me to pin out or check and probe that regular rectifier. It's a sealed unit. I can't fix it even if I did know what was wrong. Probably diodes burn out, transistorized doohickeys and all these different stuff inside of it. There's no point. Put a new one on there, good to go. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Inner Circle. Tons of cool stuff going on there all the time. A lot of videos don't actually make it onto YouTube because they're all embedded inside of that Inner Circle. Tons of cool detailed information where we really dive in on the members bikes, bikes that I'm working on and really break down fundamentals of them so we know exactly what it is that's going on and not just a general perspective of what could be. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time guys, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. Take it easy, later.